Hey friends and welcome back to the WS channel. Today we're going to be diving into something really special which is called how to unlock the secret of perfect worship guitar tone, a comprehensive guide. Now this is really intended to be more than just a guide. In fact, it's really a journey into expressing your heart through worship using your guitar and your gear and the tones at your disposal. Now what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be exploring the spiritual significance of sound, the power of skillful playing, along with understanding the technicalities of achieving that perfect worship guitar tone. Now that word perfect is kind of in inverted commas there because it's not really a perfect worship guitar tone because really you got to find what works for you and that's why I wanted to go through all of these elements today in this video we are going to get technical i'm going to show you a couple of things with regards to different effects and so forth but the main aim of the game here is to find the sound that's going to work for the situation and then dialing it in and finding how do you express your character and your personality through your playing so let's start by looking at the spiritual nature of sound now first let's look at what the bible says about sound in Psalm 98 verse 4, it tells us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And you know what? That joy that we carry in our hearts, that can actually be conveyed through our guitar's tone. And the awesome thing is with an electric guitar, we can produce sounds that range from like gentle whispers to like powerful driving anthems really mirroring that vast and multifaceted nature of God. Now if I ask you a question, does great playing, great guitar playing, an awesome tone does that touch your heart well the reason for that is because sound like i've just mentioned sound and tone carries an emotion along with it and in Nehemiah 8 verse 10 it reminds us that the joy of the lord is our strength and those joyful sounds they're infectious they can draw people in and just like sympathetic resonance in music that same joy can be conveyed in our worship and in our sound that we produce because it can really resonate with the faith and the love within the congregation and therefore creating a harmonious worship experience so what does sympathetic resonance mean well if i play a g note on my guitar over here it's a 10th fret on the a string i'm just going to play that one note and you will see as a result my open g string right here will also start resonating that's known as sympathetic resonance now do you remember king saul and young david in the bible in 1 samuel 16 23 it really speaks of how david's skillful harp playing refreshed saul and it really drove away an evil spirit they specifically requested looking for someone who is a skillful player on the harp now as worship guitarists we are called to focus on both our physical skill of playing the guitar as well as the sounds that we release using our gear and all of that kind of good stuff because through all of that we can really create an atmosphere that glorifies god and really leads people into some meaningful encounters with him and that is very very exciting so what we can know that as worship guitarists when we improve our skills and our technique that's going to allow us to play with more confidence and that in and of itself makes a massive difference in our tone now after all it's been said many times i've experienced this when i've met famous guitar players the tone is in your fingers and the reason for that is the the touch the attack the dynamics all of these kind of things really significantly affects the overall sound that you're going to be producing so you don't want to underestimate the power of practice and honing your skills that is one of the things that you can do to make the most drastic improvement in your tone now as we know sound has creative power you know when god spoke creation was formed now even in proverbs 18 21 it reminds us of the power of words and when we think of the spoken word we really recognize that sound carries that creative power and the cool thing is in the same way the sounds that we produce on our instruments also holds within it a creative force but it's not just about the tones and the timbres and the frequencies that we create it's really about the attitude of our heart that's encoded in those sounds so it's not just what you play but it's also how you are going to be playing those things so it's really that combination of both our musicianship 
and a heart for God that makes a truly impactful sound and a truly joyful noise that will pull others into the worship experience. That way, with every note, we are contributing to that atmosphere. We have that privilege of creating an environment that's going to help others connect deeply with their Creator. All right, so we've touched on the spiritual importance of sound. We've looked at how you can improve your sound and your tone simply by working on your skill and by working on your technique. And we've also looked at the importance of the state of your heart because that too is actually carried within your sound. Now, having said that, let's go ahead and look at how can we sculpt our guitar tones. We're going to be going through the entire signal chain, starting with your guitar, right through your pedals, up until your amp and basically looking at what all these elements are that are involved within creating some awesome tone. Now our tone journey really starts with the guitar itself. The shape of your guitar, the type of wood, the pickups, all of this stuff of your guitar is going to significantly affect the overall sound. For example, if you have a guitar with heavier woods like a mahogany, it's going to provide a warm and rich tone, while lighter woods like alder or swamp ash, that's going to produce like a very bright sound. And when it comes to the pickups in your guitar, um, humbuckers like I've got here tend to be warm and full, where single quills like I have on my Strat, that's going to give you more of a crisper and a clearer tone. And in the same way, your amp is also going to play a pivotal role in shaping your tone. Tube amps provide a really warm and dynamic tone, while solid state amps deliver a clear and consistent output. Of course, we are favoring tube amps for the kind of tone we're going for, and really understanding the unique characteristics of your gear, you're gonna be better equipped to shape your sound before even reaching for the effects. Now, when it comes to sculpting that main sound that you have with your guitar, with your amp and your technique, you can use those effects to go ahead and sculpt that tone to a further degree. Now, let's look at all of the main categories of effects. You get dynamic effects, gain-based effects, filter effects, modulation effects, time-based effects, pitch effects, level control, and noise control. And let's go ahead now by looking at each one of these, starting with the dynamic effects. Now, dynamic effects, that is typically the thing that you're going to have first in your chain. It's something like a compressor, and what a compressor does, it really smooths out your playing and your dynamics, and it can help for the notes to be sustained for longer. It's gonna make your playing a lot more consistent. Now what I've got here is I've got a Vox AC30 style amp on my Helix right here. And what I'm gonna play for you now is I'm gonna play uh, one or two chords with and without compression. See if you can hear the difference. But I have to mention is that uh, compression is one of those things that it's, it's more felt than heard sometimes because it's, in this case, it's a blended sound. So you're not really gonna hear the um, clean sound on its own together with compression. It's a blended sound, which yes, it definitely affects the tone. It gives you more of those dynamics and kind of sustain in your notes, but it's something that when you play with and without it, it's something you're definitely gonna feel in your playing as well. So what I'm gonna do now is let me go ahead and play a D chord right here, power chord with the compression. We'll let it ring out. I'll come back and play the same chord again without compression. See if you can spot the difference. <laughs> Turn it on one more time. So here in the studio, I can really hear that compression kicking in and really tightening up that sound. That's very important to start with a tight focus sound so that when you push everything throughout the rest of the signal chain, you've got a volume, you've got a proper signal to deal with. So talking about that, let's go ahead and check out our next type of effect, which is gain-based effects. Now, gain-based effects typically refer to overdrive, distortion, and fuzz. Now, the difference is that overdrive, that's gonna give you like a warm, natural clipping, and a boost pedal can also give you overdrive when you are pushing your amp a little bit harder and really results in some saturation that you're getting from those tubes because they tend to work a little bit harder. Now, natural clipping is when that signal from your guitar is amplified to a point where it can't really get any louder so it starts to clip and it really flattens out those peaks like if you see a waveform and that creates that warm slightly distorted sound that's often described as rich 
and full. Much like the natural overdrive you might hear when you are pushing a vintage tube amplifier and really cranking that up high. So I've got some overdrive happening there. But when you talk about distortion and fuzz, um, you can kind of look at it like this. Overdrive is going to give you that warm, natural clipping. Whereas distortion is going to give you a heavier, more aggressive tone. And that's going to really increase the gain. And it's going to alter that waveform quite drastically in, in a much bigger way than overdrive. All right, so let's have a listen to that same Vox AC30 amp with kind of a distortion pedal in front of that to see the difference that that's going to give you to this the standard overdrive. <laughs> On the other hand, fuzz, that's going to create like an extremely distorted and a very sustained sound by really heavily clipping your guitar signal. Let's have a listen to some fuzz. So as you can hear, that fuzz is really extremely distorted. So you've got these three types of gain-based effects that you can experiment with. Overdrive, you're going to have your distortion, and then fuzz. All three of those definitely makes their appearance in uh, different worship songs. And the main thing that you really want is that tube amp of yours to kind of almost always have it on edge of breakup. And we don't have a tube amp right now in the studio. We're just playing through a Helix. And that allows us to also get that edge of breakup sound. But when you use gain-based effects, it's gonna really help you to cut through the mix. And as you've just heard, all of these effects are quite different, but they're all gonna add some grit and some color to your tone and it's really up to you to use them wisely to really suit the the mood and the message of the worship song that you are going to be playing people often comment on my specific tone that i like to use and saying it's quite overdriven and, and quite distorted the kind of sound you're not really uh, used to you know hearing a lot in modern worship music but the way that i use it is i never really play all these kind of big fat kind of a, um, power chords from a rock point of view, um, I tend to play more two note voicings and those kind of things and a more of a melodic approach to my playing. And then obviously with my muting and with my technique, I make sure that even though I've got a dirty tone per se, that it's still sounding nice and clean. And that is where your technique will really come into the mix. But like I mentioned, it's up to you what kind of sound inspires you, that excites you. And then at the same time, what kind of sound is going to fit the mood and the message of the song that you are playing. Now, next up, we have filter effects. Now, EQ is a filter and it's really often overlooked by guitar players. And EQ is short for equalization. And it's very useful because it can shape your tone by either boosting or cutting certain frequencies. That's gonna make your guitar really sit well within the mix and giving it some character. Now adjusting your EQ is essential in sculpting that tone of your guitar, like we mentioned before, based on the guitar's characteristics as well as the guitar's pickups. Now, for example, if you're playing a Les Paul uh, or a Paul Smith kind of guitar like I've got here with humbuckers, and if it sounds a little bit too dark, a slight boost in your high mids and your highs can add some clarity to that sound. Now, on the other hand, if you're using a bright sounding Telecaster with single quill pickups, uh, when you reduce those highs and then boost in your low mids, it's gonna give you a much warmer tone, therefore kind of shaping the, the tone of the guitar or the pickups. Maybe you've got something like an SG, also fitted with humbuckers, and you wanna use that for rhythmic parts, but add some uh, low end and some mids, it will really give you a lot of thickness and punch to that sound. Or on the other hand, if you're using a lead for some lead tones playing a Stratocaster with single coil pickups, then if you're boosting your high mids, it's gonna ensure that your leads are really gonna cut through the mix and a little low end boost will add some fullness to your sound. Many times I've seen a guitar player on stage, but I, then I can't really hear his sound. And yes, the sound, the front of the house sound could have something to do with that. But sometimes 
the band would stop playing and the guitars would play a few things on its own and I can hear wow the amp on stage or whatever the case may be is actually super loud so it's not a, a lack of volume that is not being heard it's not cutting through the mix so as you're experimenting with these sounds it's important to know your guitar type your pickup types your distortion fuzz or overdrive these kind of things and how you're using it and then shaping that existing sound with EQ to make sure that it's going to um, perform the function it's supposed to in that particular situation. Now next up we have modulation effects and modulation effects are things like a chorus, a phaser, a flanger, these type of effects. It adds some real texture and depth to your sound. These are great for creating some lush and spacious sounds that are really perfect for reflective worship moments. So yeah, I've just got like a typical that sound with some delay I can actually go ahead and take the delay off now if I add in the chorus it's going to sound like this So chorus is one type of modulation, vibrato is also another common one, it sounds kind of like this. You can kind of hear that continuous movement in your sound these are the kind of things that keyboard players tend to do when they have their pads dialed in and they've got all the oscillations and all those kind of things happening um, a sound like that uh, there are definitely songs like champion that feature some really nice modulation and it's a great sound to have in your toolkit so to speak for when you kind of want to address some of those more lush spacious sounding um, guitar parts that are really great for those reflective worship moments now next up you've got time-based effects and that's going to contain your delays and your reverbs now what you really need to get dialed in is your delay and your reverb in your sound if you are looking for a nice modern worship guitar sound there's a lot of delay and reverb to kind of give it that epic big sound now in short delays are simply going to repeat your playing while reverb will create that sense of space around your playing and these are often used for adding some ambience and depth to your playing so here's a clean sound this is a transistor tape delay you can see as i hit the the guitar then there's all these repeats that's what a delay does here's a dual delay so it's going to be more pronounced delays and that's kind of bouncing it's a stereo dual delay um, I can hear it here behind my speakers that is your delay it's going to repeat your sound and I'm going to give you an example of that shortly now reverb as you can see or rather as you can hear it makes it sound like I'm playing in a different space without the reverb It's like a bloom verb if I go ahead and change it for like a cloud verb which is going to be a lot more so as you can hear it makes a space it changes space it can be from like a small hall reverb to like a big um, epic reverb all these kind of things that will make a difference in your playing so what I'm going to just show you real quick is I'm going to play um, a line with some simple delay and then I'll Go ahead and change the same line to include some of that dual delay check this out no delay let's add some transistor delay add a bit of bloom verb on top of that on a more accented delay it's going to sound like this if I 
play the same thing again dry. It kind of sounds like it's right here in the room with you, adding in some of this reverb and, and delay. So these kind of sounds are really great if you wanted to just get something um, that has a lot of ambience and depth that you can add to your playing. And you can even take things to the next level by having a pad-like sound, which I'm gonna demonstrate for you now. Now, yeah, I have a, a different sound without any reverb. And if I just play something like this, doesn't sound like much, but listen if I add in some of this more pronounced ambient reverb. Alright, so that was a super ambient reverb and that works very well for the right environments and the right moments within a worship set. If you want to find out more about that particular tone and how that's made up, just check out the card over here in the video or it will also be the link in the description. Now next up we're going to talk about pitch effects. Maybe you want your guitar to kind of sound like an organ or to have like an eight string guitar, One well, in that case pitch shifters and octave pedals, that's gonna allow you to alter the pitch of your guitar by either making it lower or higher. And the octaver effect is a great way to make a lead line really stand out. All right, so let's go ahead and check out an octaver effect. Yeah, I've got like... Just a normal lead line. And if I now want to really make that stand out, and really make it sing, I can go in and add in this dual pitch pog effect. So you can hear it adds an additional octave into my playing, where it's taking an octave up and an octave down. So if I were to play, kind of hear that over there or like this. So an octaver is going to give you that sound. It's a really fun effect to have in your playing. Of course, with all of these effects, it's like a spice. You don't want to overuse a particular spice, whether it's salt, pepper, or even something a bit more exotic, because it can ruin a meal. And in the same way, if you go overboard with some of these effects, whether it's delay, whether it's reverb, whether it's distortion, whatever the case may be, you can definitely overdo any of those. So make sure that you are using these with care. Now, moving on, we've got level control. Now, that is a volume pedal or even your volume control. Um, that in and of itself is an effect because it's affecting your volume and it can also be used as an expressive tool that will allow you to do some swells and really control your output level on the fly. So what I've got here is if I wanted to kind of dial in a sound like this, which is a bit more, it's got a, a vibe going there with a dual delay and a cloud verb. If I wanted to do stuff like this, So in that case, it's being used as, as an effect. You don't hear the attack on the strings. You literally just hear the sound coming in. Almost a bit of an organ vibe there. Um, I can put in that dual fog, for example. And now you see that's overdoing it. And I'm just gonna remove that vibe there. And even there, 
you're going to be, have to be careful about how you dial that kind of a sound in. We did a video on the POG, which is Electroharmonics POG, which you can also check out in the description. That is a fun effect that you can use, but um, use it with care. But your volume control is great for those kind of chordal playing. And then, of course, you can also use it um, to swell in like lead lines. So it kind of sounds a bit like a uh, violin in a way because you're removing that initial strike of the string. So, and of course, you can also do that with your volume control. But for things like that, I like having it as an expression pedal where I can just do it with my foot. So that right there is a volume control, definitely an effect that you want to get used to using in your playing. And then finally, we have noise control. When you are using some really high gain tones, something like a fuzz and all those kind of things, a noise gate can be used to cut out some of the unwanted noise and hum. Of course, that's why people like humbuckers because it also takes care of that noise. But a noise gate is really good if you have a very dirty tone. Now we obviously know and like a dirty tone, but you don't want a noisy and a messy dirty tone. You still want to make sure that you can maintain clarity and definition throughout your playing. Well, there you have it. All these different categories that you now understand and you can go in and experiment with this and really find what's going to resonate with you as a player and what's going to go ahead and create some sounds that will draw others into the worship experience. And the main thing that I can tell you here is remember, it's not about the gear, but it's really about serving and glorifying God through your music. And just for fun, imagine what David could have done on his harp with a modern day pedal board. Now, before we wrap, let me just share a quick story that really drives this point home. The great uh, guitarist Chet Atkins um, was once complimented in an interview about the wonderful sound of his guitar. And then he promptly put the guitar down on the chair and he asked, how does it sound now? And that's a funny story and it's a true story, but it just goes and illustrates the point that it's not the guitar or the gear. It's the player with the skill and the heart behind it. And that simple yet profound gesture that's going to demonstrate the heart of music is not the instrument in and of itself, but it's the hands and the spirit of the person wielding the instrument. Now the same is true for us. While traditional gear like individual pedals and amps can offer a fantastic range of sounds, they might not be the most convenient or cost-effective solution for everybody to lug around tube amps and big pedal boards and all of those kind of things. That's why I'm quite a fan um, of modern technology that's going to provide us with a brilliant all-in-one solution like the Kemper Profiler or the Line 6 Helix, to name a few. These devices, they digitally model or in the Kemper's case, profile various amps and then give you access to all of the different effects that can offer that immense range of tones in a single portable unit. I like them because they're flexible, they're easy to use, and it's great for achieving those worship tones that we are looking for on a Sunday. Now, by the way, if you're looking for some Helix tones, um, some really well-crafted patches to expand your tone toolkit, so to speak, make sure you go ahead and check out our tone shop. We'll put the link in the description. All of these patches have been made to really save you time and to help you achieve all of the professional sounding tones right out of the box and uh, like the tones I've used here today. Now in the Bible, David refers to God as the one who trains his hands for war and his fingers for battle. That's in Psalm 144 verse 1. And the interesting thing is that David was not just a warrior, but David was also a skilled musician, like we mentioned earlier in this video. And I believe that in the same way that God has prepared David's hands for physical battle, you can also go ahead and equip us for spiritual battles. Now our music, like I've mentioned here today, it can act like a conduit for spiritual breakthroughs and really bridging that gap between us and God and totally facilitating expressions of faith, of love, and of hope. Now it's my belief that the skills that we can hone and the tones that we can craft 
are all integral parts of our spiritual weaponry. And it's really exciting because as followers of Christ, we are called to use all of our God-given gifts and talents for His glory and His purpose, which includes our music, to touch the hearts and really facilitate spiritual connection and engagement and worship. Now, one more scripture, which is really awesome, in Joshua 6.20, we know that the Israelites were able to bring down the walls of Jericho with sound. In the same way, our playing can also be an instrument of breakthrough for someone. With each note we play, we can express our faith, sharing God's redemptive love and spreading His light. And with all of these powerful tools at our disposal in our hands, we are really ready to express our heart through worship using our sounds as a spiritual weapon, just as David did. And this, my friend, is the beauty of mastering your worship guitar tone. And like I said, there's no perfect worship guitar tone. There's a tone that's going to resonate for you and a tone that's going to get the job done in the areas where you find yourself playing. But please remember, our guitars, our amps and our pedals, all these things are really just tools at the end of the day. And it's very important to remember that that transformative power comes from God's presence itself. It doesn't come from our music or the instruments. These are simply tools within that role. Now our role as musicians is to use these tools to touch the hearts of many and to make a difference in this world that's in dire need of experiencing the redeeming power of God's love. Now this was quite a long video because we had a couple of important things to cover. What I will do in future videos is we'll go ahead and we'll dive into the specific settings and parameters of all the different effects and actually show that to you on screen so you can see what all these different parts are and how they work together. So we'll go ahead and dive deeper into those specific things in future videos. Now, if you're looking to find out what you can play on your guitar to play more melodically and kind of unlock that secret language of the guitar and of melodic guitar playing, go ahead and check out this video right there. So until we meet again, stay blessed and keep playing your part. Mm -hmm.